Chas Campbell of Australia has demonstrated how he can connect a standard mains motor through a flywheel to a standard alternator and get the arrangement to run self-powered and power additional power tools while not connected to the mains. This is a photograph of his original first demonstration set of equipment. Chas developed his system further and made it produce a higher output by building a more compact gearing system on a larger vertical flywheel. This is the arrangement here. He, the large flywheel is constructed of several uh, separate cut pieces welded together and that is used then to drive through various reduction belts and little flywheels a, an alternator which produces a considerable output of energy, free energy I might add. In May 2017, Chas Campbell of Australia decided to add some additional information on more powerful versions of his motor power generator. For this design, the flywheel is mounted horizontally instead of vertically. The flywheel design remains the same. It is a large steel construction which is simple enough to construct and build. But in this case, the overall weight of the flywheel is increased by bolting concrete blocks to the inside of the rim of a flywheel, making a two meter diameter flywheel weigh 800 pounds and is suited to a 10 kVA, which is an eight kilowatt generator. A two and a half diameter meter um, flywheel weighs 1,200 pounds and is suited to drive a 20 kilowatt generator. Concrete is used because it's both heavy and cheap and it can be attached to the inside of the rim using long bolts. The weighed flywheel is mounted on a vertical shaft but not attached to it. That is, the flywheel is free to rotate around the stationary vertical shaft which is mounted on the central concrete plinth set in the ground. The base construction has three separate arms radiating from the central point, both to give stability and to provide mounting points for the three drive motors, each of which has its own smaller flywheel. As the flywheel is horizontal, Chas has arranged it to be mounted on a three-leg concrete foundation securely attached to the ground. This is the shape of the base plate or foundation strip, if you prefer. The reason for the three legs is that Chas mounts a, fuller, a smaller flywheel drive on each of those three arms to give an arrangement like this. The central shaft here in the middle is stationary and the rest of the flywheel rotates around that driven by these three smaller drive motors. The central shaft is bolted to the center of the concrete support pad and it has a 16 inch pulley wheel bolted to it as well. That is bolted to the flywheel I should say. Chas draws it like this. He has the central uh, shaft the axle bearing bolted to a plate which is attached to the con concrete slab. The, uh, there are um, bolted plates here to hold the um, flywheel itself to a 16 inch pulley and that then rotates around the entire shaft itself. Interestingly there is no direct drive to the main flywheel at all. Instead, a strip of steel faced with rubber is used to create the drive. The strip is bolted or welded to just one point on the rim of the main flywheel. That is, one point on the outside of the flywheel gets this uh, unusual strip arrangement here, which forms a rising uh, surface 
to a surface then that is parallel to the actual um, rim of the flywheel. This strip forms a ramp. The ramp edges gradually outwards from the rim of the flywheel and connects with the drive wheel mounted on the shaft of each of the small flywheels. So this is the drive, uh, circular drive pad here on a, a spinning flywheel and that touches the upper part of this strip and pushes the flywheel around and that provides the drive to the entire large flywheel. Because of the positioning of the three small flywheels, this arrangement gives the main flywheel three drive pulses per revolution. But each of the small flywheels provides only one pulse drive per revolution, and each of the drive pulses are only of very short duration, as the main flywheel is spinning rapidly. This design feature produces a system which uses impulse power very efficiently, keeping the main flywheel rotating steadily, even though it's driving a substantial alternator and providing output electrical power. The input power requirement for this is 2.2 amps of current for each motor drive, giving a total of 6.6 .6 amps at 240 volts and that is 1.5 kilowatts of input power. Once the main fl flywheel gets up to its running speed of 60 rpm, it's able to supply that input power plus a great deal of excess electrical power as free energy. The three foundation arms are made of cast concrete with two rectangular steel box section channels mounted on top of each one. The drive motors are mounted on a section of angle uh, piece of steel attached to one of the box sections. This is the arrangement. You have the concrete arm coming out of the paper towards you. You've got a steel box section uh, on each side bolted to the concrete and then welded to one of those channels is a vertical piece of angle iron which is then used to be attached and to and support uh, a 1500 rev per minute motor which then has a belt drive to the axle for the small uh, flywheel small flywheel keeps spinning around this on this shaft and this is the uh, rubber faced drive cylinder which presses against the drive strip of the main flywheel itself. The motor rotates at 1400 rpm and is geared down using two pulley wheels so that it is its small drive cylinder rotates at about 700 rpm. The diameter of the drive cylinder needs to be selected so that the main flywheel rotates at 60 rpm and that depends on the diameter of the main flywheel which may be two meters two and a half meters or some other diameter which suits your needs for example if the main flywheel radius measured to the outside of the rubber face dry strip that is is 1300 millimeters and rotating at 60 RPM, then the rubber dry strip is moving through a distance of pi times 2600 millimeters per second. Consequently, the dry strip surface needs to move through the same distance, which for it is pi times d times 700 divided by 60 millimeters. If it is rotating at 700 RPM and d is the diameter of the dry cylinder, measured to the outside of the rubber facing. So 2600 equals D times 11.67, or D is 222.9 millimeters, which is 8.77 inches. However, there is a variation in daily temperature, and the ma main flywheel will physically increase in diameter 
as the temperature rises. The increase in diameter is not great, but in spite of that, we need to allow for it. Chassis has chosen to mount the dry flywheel on a spring-loaded mechanism. The movement distance does not need to be large, say half an inch or 15 millimeters or so. There are various ways of arranging this, and the mes method suggested by Chass involves mounting each of the small wheel flywheels on a hinged plate and using a spring to allow a small movement when the flywheel is pushed aside by the friction band on the main flywheel. The concrete base has three pairs of steel box sections mounted on it as shown here. This is the actual concrete base and the shown in black are the six uh, box section steel pieces and they're arranged in this shape and fashion. Uh, it's actually quite a nice arrangement. The alternator which provides the output power from this generator system is driven by a belt and pulley system from the 16 inch pulley mounted on the main flywheel which is rotating at 60 rpm. The size of the alternator which you are using determines the vertical dimensions of the whole flywheel structure. The alternator is mounted on a steel frame like this as shown here in this diagram. The steel frame is mounted vertically supported on angle arms attached to the steel box sections on the concrete base. When attached securely in position vertical angle arms are erected from the two base members to allow the mounting of two additional pivots for the three drive belts which provide the step-up gearing for driving the alternator at just over 3000 rpm. And this is the arrangement where the additional belt drives providing that gearing are connected. The first one is connected to the 16 inch drive band on the flywheel. The second one is to another step down arrangement here to another pulley which comes down then to the alternator itself. The vertical positioning of these extra two additional pulley mounts and the height of the 50 mm diameter central flywheel shaft is determined by the physical size of the alternator used to generate the electrical output. When the construction work has been completed, the entire generator is encased using panels attached to posts surrounding the structure. This gives weatherproofing as well as keeping children and blown debris away from the generator. There needs to be an access flap in the housing so that the main flywheel can be given a manual spin for starting it. There is only one direction of spin as the lowest part of the drive ramp on the main flywheel needs to approach the drive mo motors first. More detailed constructional information on this is available at www.free-energy-info.com forward slash chapter 18 dot pdf.